hi welcome back to my youtube channel my name is alice rita if you are new here you are welcome to my channel please remember to subscribe and like this video i'll be showing you how to prepare this delicious plantain it's a very healthy snack and you will, if you make it yourself you will love it and you will never again buy crispy chips again because this is very healthy rich in fiber and the essential nutrients and everything you see i've packed this for storage and this is because this is the best way to preserve it even if you are looking to make extra cash from selling snacks these LD snacks will fetch you a lot of money if you know how to budget so you need to store this in a hair tight bag make sure that the bag is hair tight if not the crispiness would uh, become will be gone after some days so that's why it's important to store it well so as I've said, please remember to subscribe. We are going to be using three unripe plantain for this uh, recipe. Here is my dicer. It came with different uh, parts. So I'll be using the blade function to slice this banana. And now I'm going to be peeling the banana. It's not ripe, so it's not going to be easy to peel off the plantain. I keep calling it banana. Maybe it's because the German call it cock banana anyway so i'm going to be peeling off this uh, plantain and as you can see i made a line and now i'm peeling it with my hand can see my palm in order to prevent the sap that's the juice from the banana uh, from the plantain skin to uh, from blackening my hand i'll be coating my hand with oil if you have uh, cooking uh, gloves at home use it to protect your hand but because i do not have any glove at home i'm using oil to coat my palm so that the sap from the uh, plantain uh, skin uh, do not uh, stain my palm if you are peeling about 10 of this and you did not coat your hand with uh, oil by the time you finish you will see your nails or your the side you're using to peel the plantain it will become a bit darkened this will go when you if you wash it well with uh, you know warm water and soap but i don't want to because i'm going to be recording this video i don't want to be showing a black palm <laughs> I know how disgusting it looks when uh, a chef is cooking and the hand is dirty. I'm not a chef, but still, I wouldn't want you to be disgusted by a black stain on my hand. Okay, now that we've peeled this tree plantain, we are going to be slicing it. Remember, I told you I'll be using the blade function. So just slide it across like that. Be careful, that blade is very sharp. And see, that is how thick the plantain that we are slicing is if you don't want it to be that thick don't apply pressure when you are cutting it that way to give you a thin a thinner slice so i'm going to be cutting three different uh, size this is the medium size so it's the first one i'm slicing I'm going to be making a medium size When you're getting to the end of the plantain, be very careful because hmm, as lovely as it is to slice a plantain with this dicer, so also it is how uh, quick one can cut one finger with the blade. So please be careful if you are using the this type of um, dicer. So this is how much slice uh, of uh, plantain that I got from. This is how much I got from a single medium-sized plantain. You can see. And when it's time for me to fry them, I'm going to make sure that I split them apart, just to make sure that they are not uh, stuck together. Yeah, like that. So I've already done this for this one. Okay, so I'll set this aside. I'm going to be cutting the shorter size and. The way I'll be cutting this, if you notice, I'm not flattening the plantain towards the 
so i'm only cutting from the top that way i'm able to get a more shorter a shorter slices of the plantain also we're getting to the end of this so i'll be slightly careful i don't want to cut my finger I'm going to use a knife to scratch the surface because once the banana, you know, it's not ripe. So when the plantain sticks to the blade, it prevents it, the sharpness reduces. So it reduces the friction at which the uh, plantain will glide over it. Yeah. So we finish cutting these smaller slices. See how much I also got from slicing just one. And now, in order to get a more long plantain you have to make sure you flatten the plantain completely as you're slicing it so if you look at this it's longer than the previous two that i showed you so that's the trick between getting the different sizes of the plantain the more you flatten the plantain on the on the dicer the longer the slices you're going to be getting so just carefully This is what we got also from this third one. You can see how long the slices are. I, for me, I love the longer slices. I don't know if it's this. I think it's because of the beauty. You know, so you're able to pick just one that is not too long. So you see the three different sizes. The longer one, the longest one, the short one, and the medium size. So, yeah. So now let's start frying. I just love looking at this plantain. Okay, I'm going to be seasoning this plantain with salt. You could directly sprinkle the salt on the plantain, but you'll be getting salt flakes. So I'm going to be mixing salt with water. Here I'm using sea salt. And I'm just going to be adding some water to the salt. And I'm going to make sure that I mix it so that the salt dissolves into the water. So I'll just mix it like this. If you have warm water, that will be quicker to melt the salt. But I don't want the um I don't want warm water because that will change the salt a little. Some of the zeodide or fluoride will evaporate. Anyway, doesn't matter. We're not doing chemistry. So now we'll be using some of the salt water to season this the sliced plantain. And remember, I told you earlier that. You should split, separate the slices so that they don't stuck together. When they are stuck together, they fry as they glue together. And such ones are usually not crispy. That's why it's good to make sure that the plantains are not stuck together. And also doing this, you're able to evenly mix the salt to the plantain chips. I'm going to be frying this plantain with sunflower oil. So if you're frying planting chips please use a clean oil the one you've never used to fry anything before that way you don't get any odor from any food to know if the oil is hot enough i'm going to be putting in a small slice of the planting and you can see that temperature is about right if the planting can comes to the top of the oil surface so that means we have the right and perfect temperature it is important to do this because if when you had the, that little slice of plantain to the oil, if it's just sitting at the bottom, it means your temperature is not right. And if you put the plantain into the oil, it will soak. It will be. It will. Be, it will soak some oil. So I'm just going to because I'm using a small pot. I'm going to be putting the plantain in in small batches. So you see, I'm just putting in each slice. Like that. Yeah, and I'm using my spatula to make sure that nothing is stuck to the bottom. So you see, I'm just keep going to keep adding more slices into this oil. You can see it's important to keep mixing, especially once the planting have lifted themselves up to the oil surface. 
it's important to keep mixing them so as to allow them to evenly fry if not you will have some slices well fried and the other not completely fried even if you don't mix them you would uh, some like the one i put earlier than the other uh, than the one i put later they will start getting darker in color that way you will not have a uniform colored plantain that's why it's important to make sure you stay with it carefully just mix the oil together to allow the plantain to change position by itself this frying it's not stressful at all it's the most relaxing thing for me so just play a nice background music get yourself a bottle of uh, juice or a glass of don't drink wine so that you don't fall asleep <laughs> a glass of water a glass of smoothie i had a cup of water beside me so i'm just frying this and enjoying myself if i'm frying if i have a bigger batches of uh, plantain to fry i'll be using a very big pot but because I'm only making for myself this plantain. I might take some to work. I'm just going to use, I'm not using the complete one bottle of oil. So the one bottle should be about one liter. I'm not using, I'm using about um, three third of the, bot of the bottle to fry this uh, plantain. And you can see that you can already see the golden color of the plantain. It's coming to life already. And how would you know that the plantain is uh, completely fried? You just watch along with me. I'm not going to fast forward this video because I would like you to know when the right time to stop frying the first uh, batch that you put in the oil. If you notice when I put the plantain into the oil, the oil was uh, producing a lot of bubbles and as the plantain uh, becomes ready, the bubbles in the oil is reducing. So the plantain is ready at the point when there are less or almost no more bubbles. But because there are plantain inside the oil, you there is no point that there will be there is no time that the bubbles will not be there. But it will be very little, like even if you've never fried anything before, because of the low level of bubbles, you will know that this plantain is ready. Look at that. You could even hear the crispy sound of the plantain on the on the spatula I'm using in mixing them. And also you can feel it when you are mixing the so you see that now we are having lesser bubbles in this oil. So this plantain is telling me it's time to get it out. You see, no more bubbles. You just bring them out. It's important you put them straight into a sieve so that whatever oil uh, you've packed together with the plantain, it can drain. If the oil did not drain from the plantain, the plantain will become oil soaked. And you don't want that. You don't want to have uh, chips that is so soaked in, what, in oil. No. So you can see that. Hear the crispy sound. That's it there in the sieve, allowing it to drain whatever excess oil is in it. Now this oil is too hot, so I'm going to reduce the heat to the next uh, medium. And now I'll fry the second batch. You can see. You see those bubbles? See the plantain coming up? Like I told you. with my cast iron pot so I don't damage it. So. so while that second batch is frying, I'm going to get ready second batch shorter fragments the one i cut into the shorter size i'm going to 
season them with oil uh, with uh, salt water being careful with the longer one because I don't want it to be broken so this one that is shorter it will be easy to just turn it in okay this is finished frying you see it's getting quicker So for this shorter one, I'm going to pour everything into the oil at once. Why did I do that? I want you to see what will happen when you put so much plantain in the oil. And also, if you don't split the plantain, you can see this plantain is too much for the oil that I'm using in frying it. But I want you to understand that if you are in a yeast and you're trying to fry a lot of plantain, the type of outcome you will get if you don't increase the oil that you are using to fry the large batches of plantain. So you're going to see the outcome of this plantain. I'm expecting it that they will be stuck together and it will not really look as beautiful as the ones that we fried in smaller batches. So let's just put everything in because I want you to see and also... It's a good experience for you to know what you are going to get if you fry in a yeast. So it's always good to most beautiful food are prepared with lots of patience and love. And uh, okay, so let's just keep mixing this. And remember, when the bubbles is as um, when the bubbles have reduced to almost. Uh, fewer bubbles then that will be a good signal that a plantain is ready until then i will just keep mixing this plantain and i hope that uh, you've uh, liked this video if you've not subscribed before please click the subscribe button remember to keep, click the bell so that you are notified whenever i upload a new video and you will never miss any videos from me Yeah, so I was talking about that you can make money from this uh, planting. I'm sure you don't believe me when I said so, right? Okay, let me tell you a story. When I was still growing up in Nigeria, because, you know, I studied in Nigeria before I came abroad for my master's and bachelor, uh, PhD degree. We supplied this planting to universities' hostels. And if you know how to calculate every cost of production the cost of delivery cost of everything you'll be able to reasonable package this planting to a reasonable size and still make profit because it's a very good way of making money i just if if that if uh if i'm allowed to sell something like this here i think i would definitely love to make something like this and sell but I don't know what regulation is um, attached to making snacks abroad. If not, trust me, I'm very good at turning things into money. So if I can, if I can fry this at the weekend, get a good packaging bags, a nice label, and a very good place to deliver to, I think I'll be swimming in uh, planting money. <laughs> Although I'm sure that uh, taxation will take most of the money from me. But anyway, if you are looking for a business idea or you are looking to make some extra cash, these plantain chips can fetch you that money. If you are in the U.S., the, there are African stores you can buy plantain chips from. If you are in the U.K., I bought these plantain chips from the Turkish store. 
you can get them also from indian store if you are lucky that you have some nigerian store closer to you all you have to do is just buy the unripe plantain and you are set and you can see that i just i didn't have to use anything like a curry there are some banana chips i do buy in the store that you can already see that mm, this one is too yellow to be plantain you know that they've mixed their plantain with uh, curry just to make it col more, more colorful but actually all you need is a matured green plantain Yeah, I'm going to be taking some of these to work. I hope my colleagues loves them because I definitely can finish eating this. I spend a lot of money buying plantain chips from the Indian shops. I don't know why I did that when I can already make it myself. See? This next batch also is getting ready. You can see that we're having lesser bubbles. You can hear the crispy sound of the plantain against the spatula I'm using in mixing it. Yeah, so it's time for us to pack this also out. You can see there are lesser bubbles. Okay, out they come, out they come, out they come. You see, they are stuck together like I expected. So now I hope you've seen from this video that if you're trying to fry a beautiful, crispy, non-stock together plantain, that you should fry them in smaller batches. And if you're frying in bigger batches, make sure to use a bigger pot with a lot of oil. And also, if, don't forget that after I fry the first batch, I reduce the gas from... The, uh, from the hottest position to the second hottest position. If the oil is not hot enough, your plantain will soak oil, so it will be oil soaked. And if the oil is too hot, your plantain will get burnt, you won't get the golden color. So after this one, we are going to be frying the longest one from today's video, the longest plantain chips so how am i going to fry them that they won't get uh, bent or coily or stuck together well let's see here i'm going to mix it also with salt water like i told you earlier i'm going to separate them that they are not stuck together i don't want you already you've seen from the previous one what happens when you don't split them apart Going to add the salt water now. Sprinkle it on top. And I'm going to mix them together. Also, you can fry this plantain using sugar. So for the sugar one, you would have to uh, boil the sugar over the it so that it's melts completely and then you mix the sugar water with the plantain or with uh, sea salt that also will stay if you had the salt immediately while it's still hot so i want to be careful because i don't want this long one to be broken i really want it to be long so that you can see the beauty of the long to the medium size and to the short one all of them are delicious. They are the same taste. It's just presentation. So now, this is the one we fried earlier. Can you see how yellow? And uh, see? Ha. It's perfect. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum. Because this one is long, I'm going to don't want it to stick to the each other.
I saw that I'm broken already, so I just trying to create room for the shorter one. important to uh, stay with the plantain because when you mix it evenly it helps it to cook evenly also so you won't be having uh, one side um, darker in color than the second side to be careful so I don't break the plantain if you notice this cook quicker it's better to fry in smaller batches than to pour in so many at once oh I think I'm breaking this I need to be careful I hear the creepy sound. That's me stealing it. Why is it? So you see that it was important that I reduce the heat when after I finish uh, frying the first batch. If not, we would have had a burnt plantain. So this is what is remaining. Throw that in.
the long one. it already. Can you see that the bubbles also are also reduced and it's time to get this out. Look at our planting. You see? Can hear the sound? The reason why it's not crispy yet is because it's still hot. You need to allow it to cool. The ones that are cool already. This is the first batch we fried. See? This is why it's important to split them because if you are trying to split when they are ready, they will break. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. I'm really happy that uh, extends out exactly like i wanted if i was going to buy this in the shop this portion would have cost me about two pound and i've used just uh each planting cost about 50 pence and that means i've fried this three planting with less than two pound see this was the one that i turned everything in at once and why did I do that? Why didn't I fry in small batches like the other? I wanted to say that if you try to fry because you are in a haste without splitting them, see how they glue together? And also, they didn't, the, the oil wasn't enough to fry that much batch at once. So if you are trying to use this in, for doing business, make sure that you have at least enough oil in the pot and don't be in a haste take your time to split them it doesn't take time it's even more relaxing to do and uh, see so now you see why you should not fry it in a haste and this is the last one we fried the long one so depending on the type of length and shape that you want, <laughs> see this one, I don't know what shape I will call that. This is just really beautiful. Thank you for watching until the end. You guys are amazing. 
don't forget to click the notification bell so that you are aware when a new video comes online and please check out my other videos thank you until next time bye